Thank you, Helen. My name is Alenka Suhadonik, and I'm Serbian ambassador to China since the end of 2019. And frankly, now I will properly start doing my job after three years <laughs> of COVID. So on my career, before, before coming to Beijing, I was DG for economic and public diplomacy at the foreign ministry before I served as a Slovenian ambassador to Israel. Before that, I was DG for uh, development cooperation and humanitarian aid. I served in New York as a consul general, and I started my diplomatic career in London. Uh, so that would be in short. And um, I just want to say thank you to the CCG, to the UN Women, and to the Women in Trade for inviting me today. Since, um, uh, as per usually, we female persons are of more disciplined nature, that is my belief. So I will try to follow uh, the three questions that Helen has posed to us. So the first one, what challenges have I faced as a, a female leader? On that, uh, allow me to tell two anecdotes. One is rather old, and it's about around 15 years ago when I was serving as a DG for Development Cooperation and Humanitarian Aid, we were organizing the first Slovenian Development uh, Day, days. And we were expecting a lot of foreign guests, and I've decided that I'm going to await personally for our keynote speaker at the airport. And uh, when, the, um, when the person saw me, uh, when he saw a smiling woman, you know, greeting him, he just gave me his passports. Most likely thinking that I am the person who is going to arrange his luggage and, you know, somehow arrange his smooth transition. So then I explained and introduced kindly myself. Then it was a moment of awkwardness, but at the end of the day, the conference was truly successful. So the second anecdote is of more recent nature. I participated at one international conference here in China. And while waiting uh, for my turn to speak at the panel, I was listening to a colleague of mine who was speaking about the importance of women empowerment. During my time waiting for my turn, I started to look at the, the agenda and at the guest speakers. And to my dismay, I realized that I'm the only female speaker. And it was a big conference. So then I suggested to the organizers, I mentioned that at the panel, and I suggested that uh, the organizers put that into the proceedings and also with the call that the next conference will have much more substantive female representation. According to the audience, they somehow liked, uh, uh, liked my intervention, but unfortunately, I do think that is the only thing that they remembered from my intervention. But that's how it goes. So, uh, what I would say, my advice to women who are just starting uh, out in their career, and actually to all of us, just insist on your voice being heard. If the panel is organized, insist to have female uh, uh, representation. If you are the only female, insist to have one more. And for sure, not just on the 8th of March, and not just on so-called women's issues. And when the stereotypes are applied to you, take it with a bit of humor. That helps always, I think. At the end of the day, it is the other party who should reflect on their own biases. On the second question, how, to, uh, how can we cultivate a more inclusive environment that would empower the women lead? I'd like to give the example of the policies of my country, Slovenia. Um, the policies that were built and they are still built, are uh, really, uh, uh, for that, a, a very important kickoff was, of course, for all of us, the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Actions and its uh, follow-up processes. But the, the policies are in Slovenia are regularly screened through gender lenses and structural and adjustments are made. I will just give you a few recent Examples. Um, 
child provision services and good standard of public kindergartens is, of course, of utmost importance for the female participation in the workforce. That has been the standard in Slovenia for decades, including the 12 months paid uh, uh, maternal leave. But last year, in addition to that, what was introduced was 60 days of untransferable uh, parental leave for both parents. So just to uh, entice uh, fathers stay at home with a child for two months. On the gender equality in Slovenia, we are not doing as badly, especially not concerning the um, gender pay gap. This is around 3.1. 3.1 is not such a bad number comparing to on globally on average that is about 20%. But there is a big difference when it comes to the gender pension gap. And precisely for that reason, the measures were introduced so that uh, the pension gap between women and men is going to be decreased into, uh, in the new pension policy and pension reform. Uh, concerning the digital inclusion, uh, there was a new act on promotion of digital inclusion that was adopted last year. In that act, there is a particular emphasis on gender and um, the focus in, on the digital gender gap, the empowerment of women and girls in science, technology, engineering, etc., etc. As it looks like, some of those programs are uh, functioning well. For instance, I can tell you, uh, which I found when preparing for today's panel, I found as a surprise uh, as well, that um, uh, among the entrepreneurs in Slovenia, women entrepreneurs are twice as likely as men to start using new digital technologies, 16.3% versus 7% uh, of men. Um, before it was mentioned, uh, the policy, um, Arantxa Gonzalez has mentioned feminist uh, foreign policy, I can tell you that uh, I'm proud to say that we had for the first time, we have for the first time female foreign minister. Uh, that might be one of the reasons uh, to, to, uh, for Slovenian foreign policy to be declared a feminist foreign policy. But what does that really mean? You know, what is going to be different? Is it anything going to be different? In principle, one of the long-standing issues and um, important blocks of our foreign policy is the um, empowerment of women in the context of peace and security. So whatever actions we are taking in the foreign policy field, it needs to be screened through gender. Uh, still, as we all know, advancement takes time. For instance, in my country, for over two de de decades, we have the quotas. Uh, for the political participation of women. We had the quotas, but we did not fulfill the quotas. But last year, 2022, was really, uh, was really a historical year. Let me tell you, dear colleagues, for the first time, and we are very proud of that, we have the female president, female speaker of the parliament. Uh, we have around 40% of female parliamentarians. And... As already mentioned, a for the first time female foreign minister. Um, if I may, I, I would also like to, to contribute, uh, you know, uh, to your question on how we as an individuals can can um, advance a more inclusive environment um, for the women leaders of tomorrow. I would just say, support young colleagues. Listen to them. Let them be your sounding board. My daughter, for instance, is very, very tough sounding board to me. For me, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, as she always says, if you do not raise your voice, voice when needed, what is the message that you're giving to me and to other young females? You need to speak when it's needed. So, no time for being. A bit tired to be the blasé, as my daughter Hannah would say to me. 
In conclusion, I would just like to touch upon um, the gender the digital divide and that uh, and the artificial uh, intelligence that is going to define the 21st century. Algorithmic gender bias is a, a reflection of the world that we live in. For instance, the mobile gender gap report from 2021 highlights that women are 7% less likely than men to own a mobile phone and 15% less likely to use mobile internet. There are also around 240 million fewer women than men accessing uh, mobile internet. The fact that women have less access to these technologies means that they are not generating the same amount of data as male users, which inherently skew the data sets. Uh, in addition, there is also a chronic lack of women opting for careers in data science, uh, for instance, as the report of the European Institute for Gender Equality showed, in the EU and the UK, just 16% of those working on AI are women. And women also remain a minority in technical and leadership roles in tech companies. So, uh, the report of the Digital Future Society, um, by the name Gender Bias and Data Towards Gender Equality, in digital welfare has identified set of measures that needs to be applied. I'm going to mention just a few of them. Inclusion of gender relevant data sets and statistics. Inclusion of multiple forms of knowledge and multiple perspectives. Uh, putting data in a broader context of cultural and socioeconomic realities. Ensuring diversity when developing AI ethics governance structure and include women and marginalized groups in design and feedback. So, with adhering to these principles, we might move from the AI that, that reflects the world that we live in to the world as it could be. And we deserve we and we deserve it. That kind of work. Thank you.